Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be giving you all the information you need to set up your Shadow Priest ready for the Unchained Arena Season 2, taking a look at race, talents, gear, soul binds, and everything else you need. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skillcapped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry-level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Shadow Priest gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your specs playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allowing you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill-capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all for as little as $4.99 a month. Anyway, enough talk, let's jump into the video. Kicking things straight Straight off with race selection. Race for Shadow Priest, unlike most classes, is very up in the air. There's a lot of different opinions and each race can have their own strengths and weaknesses. So let's take a look, starting on the alliance side of things. Human for most classes is the go-to race with no exception. The sole reason for this is the will to survive ratio. This allows you to then drop your gladiator's medallion trinket in favor for Relentless, which will allow you to gain the best of both worlds. Shadow Priest though, due to void shift, is very dependent on gladiator's medallion. So human is still a great option for niche cases where you can utilize the Relentless Trinket for every 90 seconds if you're playing with a medallion. This means that Night Elf becomes a much more desirable alternative. This is due to the racial Shadow Meld. Whereas every man for himself will only provide you with some benefits in niche cases, you can always make use out of Shadow Meld. Whether that's just to avoid some damage, avoid crowd control, or if you're a real gamer, look to Shadow Meld some kidney shots or even blinds. Then, our next race is one for both factions. It's a good option on Alliance if Human or Night Elf don't appeal to you, and the strongest ratio on Horde. We're of course talking about Pandaren. The primary reason for this is the Quaking Palm ratio. Shadow Priest thrives in crowd control based compositions, and being able to remove your dots and have an extra crowd control on a separate diminishing return can make your setups that more potent. Whilst Pandaren is hands down the strongest ratio on the Horde side, we can admit it's definitely not the best looking. So either Goblin for the added mobility and haste or even undead for the minor additional damage and added fear break. To be honest though, Shadow Priest is one of the only specs where racial isn't so definitive. You can't be orc and you don't get the full benefit of human, so if you don't like our suggestions, you'll still perform just fine with whichever race you desire. Moving on, our next topic is going to be talent selection. For our level 15 row, the only real option is Unfurling Darkness. This allows you a much easier time at spreading your dots, as once you cast Vampiric Touch, you'll then be able to instantly cast it again on top of dealing some initial damage every 15 seconds. This is especially good because it synergizes with two other talents, Misery and Damnation. Misery will make Unfurling also apply Shadow Word Pain, and then Damnation as it will prop Unfurling also, meaning you can get two sets of dots out without any casting. Dropping down a row, unlike our first tier, we have some diversity as you can pick between all three. Body and Soul offer some added mobility, so it can be utilized when you're not the target. Sand Lane on the other hand sacrifices some personal defense for added healing. This is a great pickup versus any high consistent damage composition. A great example is against caster cleaves like Shadow Play. Then, the talent you should pick by default and one which will see the most play is Intangibility. This adds a 50% maximum health heal to Dispersion as well as reducing its cooldown by 30%, a must have in any scenario where you are the main focus. On the level 30 row, it's all about misery. As we mentioned, this not only has great synergy with Unfurling Darkness but will also save you a huge amount of globals over the course of a game, as applying Vampiric Touch will also put up Shadow Word Pain. The next row allows us to pick between some different forms of crowd control, and again, all three are valid options. Last word can be great for any composition where your silence is your main win condition. A good example of this is going to be when playing with a class that brings consistent stuns and you're wanting to kill healers. Mind Bomb on the other hand favors heavy crowd control compositions, but for this to be effective, you need some way to easily secure it. A great example would be when playing with a hunter. They can trap and you can then secure your Mind Bomb as a follow-up. The third talent is again the one you'll find yourself playing most of the time. Psychic Horror gives you a ranged stun which is great for securing kills, setting up crowd control, you name it, just great all around. On level 40, we've got two options, Shadow Crash and Auspicious Spirits. The default pickup here is Shadow Crash. This gives you on-demand damage and insanity generation, ideal for any setup based composition or when you're looking to do single target pressure. Auspicious Spirits is a little more niche. You'll want to pick this up when you're aiming to do maximum damage on multiple targets. So for example, Shadow Play or Boomkin 
Shadow Priest and also Battlegrounds. Then, for the penultimate row, the choice is between Damnation and Void Torrent. Damnation is a default here due to its consistency. You've got that good synergy with Unfurling and Misery and also an easy way to get Devouring Plague up onto your target and damage rolling. Void Torrent is a little more niche. It's good for one thing and one thing only, burst damage, but only when you're able to free cast. So in some specific matchups or compositions, this does have a place. And lastly, for our final row, again there are two options, Ancient Madness and Hungering Void. The most consistent pick and default talent that you should play in most games is going to be Hungering Void. This gives you 10% more damage after you Void Bolt a target and also longer Void forms. You can never go wrong with this talent. Whereas Ancient Madness is a little more situational and its only real use is when combined with Void Torrent and a few other PvP talents in order to go for one shots, as a huge amount of crit just after entering Void form can enable you to do some surprising burst damage, which leaves our default talent setup looking like this. The biggest changes for 9.1 comes with the addition of 3 new PvP talents alongside the removal of Lasting Plague. First, let's talk about the two PvP talents you want to be playing most of the time, starting with Void Shift. Now this was a PvP talent you pretty much never wanted to be without in 9.0. The ability to save yourself or a teammate is undeniably strong, but with how 9.1 is shaping up and the added damage talents we now have at our disposal means Void Shift is falling slightly out of the meta. With how fast paced games are, Void Shift loses a lot of value and instead opting for more aggressive talents is shaping up to be a better option. Still though, Void Shift does remain one of our strongest defensive talents, and if that's what you need in a certain matchup, this will still be a great pick. One that you should always pick up though is going to be Greater Fade. This did get slightly nerfed, having its duration lowered by 1 second, but it still remains to be a must-have due to how diverse it is. It's your best tool defensively at surviving or avoiding damage, but can also be used to avoid card control or even simply for the movement speed. Currently though, Shadow Priest talents are so tricky, almost every single talent can be played in different scenarios. Driven to Madness, despite now no longer reducing lockouts, is still a great option when you're being focused purely down to the void form reduction. Playable primarily when playing against a melee when you expect yourself to be the target. Void Origins is good when playing with a setup based composition, but feel like you might struggle to get into void form. A great example of this would be when playing with a rogue looking to kill a target in a single swap but they have multiple interrupts to stop you. This is also great combined with void volley to make your setups instant and less telegraphed. Thought Steel is again very situational. The only time you'll ever want this is when up against a mage, either to gain access to yourself or remove their ability to polymorph. Great in any game versus a mage where you can make use of it, primarily when playing a more crowd control driven composition. One huge buff which is pretty much going under the radar is the change to Siphene, which now has had its health increased to 10% of the players rather than just 10 health. This makes Siphene a lot more usable. It's going to be especially good when you know your enemy won't be able to easily kill it. Siphene is a talent which does extremely well in lower ratings. For those of you playing at higher ratings though, Siphene is very situational. Situational. If you're not being focused and you know you can heavily capitalize on the healing reduction in either a setup or as enemies retreat, then it's a good pick. But in some cases, if enemies cop onto the fact you're playing it, it can just be useless. Okay, so let's talk about the new additions with 9.1. Megalomania is looking to be a high risk versus high reward talent. What this does is give you access to another void form thanks to Surrender to Madness. This time though, it won't kill you and instead will drop you to 35%. Having a telegraph time of when you're about to drop to 35% is is something teams can take advantage of. But if you know that you won't be the focus, this is your best offensive PvP talent. And even when being focused in some cases, the damage of this combined with Void Volley can still be a worthwhile aggressive pick. Bonus points if you use this against shamans as you can use it on totems to remove the drawback altogether, making the talent even stronger. One of the other new additions was Void Volley. This PvP talent can be extremely hit or miss but in the current early season meta it's performing quite well. The main use of Void Volley is when playing an almost cheese burst oriented spec. Combining the fear and added damage of Void Volley with the additional Void form of Megalomania topped off with a critical strike chance coming from Ancient Madness. This definitely looks like more of a gimmick talent at first, but the more you play with it, you realize how strong it can be if the stars align. The problem though is just how unreliable it can be. First off, you have to be in melee range and even then the volley can still not hit the target. The biggest redeeming factor is that if it hits, the fear doesn't share diminishing returns, so you can lock targets down long enough for you to secure a kill in some situations making it very strong in the current fast paced meta. The final addition to our PvP talent arsenal is improved mass dispel. This will be a talent which we will find use for very regularly. The main uses for improved mass dispel is going to be up against either hunters or mages where you're able to consistently make use out of mass dispel, reducing the cooldown and making the cast so fast it's ridiculously hard to interrupt. 
So to recap, in almost all of your games, the one constant you're gonna want is Greater Fade. What you pick from here is entirely situational, and what makes this tricky is that literally every single talent, bar Void Shield and Mind Trauma, can be played in certain scenarios and in any combination. It's up to you to consider the matchup. Can you get away with playing Megalomania here? Do you need improved mass dispel? Will you get use out of Void Volley or will nobody be in melee range? Will they hit me or my partner, making either Driven to Madness or Siphine a better option? Or will the added defense of Void Shift get me good value here? Asking yourself these questions at the start of each game will make deciding your PvP talents a lot easier. Even though there was some slight rebalancing to Covenants in 9.1, your best option still remains to be the same. Venthyr is still hands down the strongest choice for Shadow Priest in PvP. It provides you with everything that a Shadow Priest needs. You gain the added mobility from Door of Shadows. Great Soulbind Trees which we'll get into later, but more importantly, Mind Games. This Covenant ability is unlike any other. It's like it was made solely for PvP, causing some huge initial damage which scales with your mastery as well as then causing your target's healing to do damage and vice versa. Every other covenant is a very straightforward downgrade with nothing coming even remotely close. What's new for all covenants in 9.1 is an additional few rows on the soulbind talent tree. Nadia the Mistblade was previously the strongest soulbind tree in 9.1 and still remains to be so. Following this route, you're able to pick up two very strong Soulbind passives, the first of which is Thrill Seeker, giving you a huge passive to one of our favorite stats, Haste. Then we've got Familiar Predicaments. Despite its nerf, this is still an insane passive for PvP, reducing the duration of interrupts, snares, and also root effects. The two new additions we get with this Soulbind route are Nimble Steps, which gives us a 10% passive slow and a 4 second route when you drop below 35% health to all players within 8 yards. And best of all is the new End of Tree passive fatal flow. This gives you 10 seconds of 20% increased versatility, fantastic for PvP. And with an expanded soulbind system comes more slots for conduits. Following this route, we gain access to 2 endurance conduits, 1 finesse conduit, but more importantly 3 potency conduits. For the latter, we're going to want the same two as in patch 9.0, so Dissonant Echoes and Shattered Perceptions. Even despite the recent nerfs to Dissonant Echoes, it remains strong. Then with our third additional option being Haunting Apparitions, this just gives a nice boost to your passive damage but when compared to the other options is superior. Then for Endurance, your strongest is Lice Inspiration with your second Endurance conduit being the newly added Condensed Animosphere. Before finishing off with your one finesse conduit of choice which is Clear Mind, giving you that reduced mana cost on the Spell Magic and Mass the Spell, leaving our completed Soulbind tree looking like so. So with all of the Covenant systems and talents covered, let's move on to gearing. 9.1 sees the release of gear which scales up to 259 at Duelist level, meaning our best gear will all be obtainable from PvP, bar 1 or 2 items for you min-maxers which we'll get into later. So for your stat priority, it remains the same. It's versatility followed by haste, with mastery and critical strike being far weaker which means you'll want to buy all pieces that have both haste and versatility. Then, as for trinket choices, we still want to be sticking with double PvP ones, and despite Emblem's nerf, it still remains the go-to for any time you're being trained, combined with the Gladiator's Medallion which is standard for Shadow Priest due to Void Shift. If you're not being focused though, swapping out the Emblem for an Insignia is preferred. Whilst you can do very well with a full set of PvP gear, something we're not too sure on is the impact of Domination Sockets inside of PvP. It's confirmed they are nerfed by 50% and that the socket bonus won't work, but with Domination gear from the final two bosses being at 246 eye level on Heroic and 259 on Mythic, the latter is equal to the highest PvP gear obtainable. And with all pieces having versatility, they become very desirable no matter the strength of Domination Sockets, as that way you're essentially getting a socket with no drawback. So if you're able to access these items, eventually they will become best in slot as long as Domination Sockets remain active in PvP. The heroic version though is equal to that of 1600 rated arena gear, so whether these pieces are good will purely be based on the strength of the Domination Shards. But with shards like the Shard of Kier being in the game and a throwback to Resounding Protection, they could end up having a pretty big impact, but we'll keep you updated on this throughout the season. What we haven't touched on yet for gearing though is your Legendary. There were a few new additions, all of which were Covenant based, and with the Mind Games one being very lackluster, sadly nothing has changed for Shadow Priest. The best Legendary still remains to be Sefus. Whilst not very interactive, the reduced crowd control duration and added easy to proc stats still outweighs any other option we currently have. And for this, it's hard at this 
time to recommend what slot to craft it on. Ideally, you want it on chest for the added stats, but if domination sockets end up being mandatory, it will conflict with a domination slot, and if that's the case, it will still be neck. For the missives, you want haste and versatility. Alternatively, the other option for legendary is Twins of the Sun Priestess, which excels in double caster compositions. The same as with Sefus though, ideally, you'll want it on the head, but this conflicts with a domination socket so potentially neck will be the best. Same as before, haste and versatility missives are the best. With gearing out of the way, our final section is macros. As Shadow Priest is a heavy utility-based caster, it's recommended to have some way to easily cast your utility on your teammates. This includes Void Shift, Power Word Shield, Leap of Faith, and to a lesser extent Shadowmen. This can be done by using party macros. You'll then also want some way to easily use your crowd control, either by Arena 1-2-3 macros or focus. On top of that, it's ideal to have an easy way to apply your damage overtime effects to your focus target. This can make getting up dots a lot easier. For some more specific macros, you'll also be wanting some way to easily cancel dispersion, which we recommend putting in Mind Flay or even Mind Blast. An all-in-one Shackle macro, which will automatically shackle any pet that a player has active. Then some nice quality of life optional macros for Door of Shadows and Master Spell, removing the need to click twice. Or this all-in-one macro removing the need to swap between Void Torn and Damnation on your bars. And there you have it guys, that's our 9.1 Shadow Priest PvP guide. The spec for the most part plays the same and continues to look very strong. Just as a reminder, if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more, be sure to drop a like on this video, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really goes a long way. And if you're looking to really take your game to that next level, check out skillcap.com slash wow to check out the rest of the Shadow Priest course and get access to all of our exclusive arena commentaries from the best Shadow Priests in the world. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.